As I record this video, I respectfully acknowledge that I'm standing on the unceded traditional territory of the Comox First Nation. And this video is about some of the special characters in J. So we're talking about literals, but some of the special ones. So let's take a look and see how Jig can make it a bit clearer about what's going on when we're dealing with special characters. So here's a variable, and it looks like a two by three array of integers. But of course, it's never quite as simple as it seems because that's the way I am. And here we can see that we actually have a two by five literal. And what I do when I'm using jig is to make the spaces a bit more obvious, the blanks, I have them a lighter shade of green. So that's the UTF encoding for a blank. And I've lightened it, and it's full width, but I've lightened it so that you can, uh, you can see quite quickly where the blanks are in text. And that is actually kind of useful. Let's take a look at the next one that I've got prepared. Hmm. This one is interesting because it's hard to say what shape it is, and there's some interesting things going with the spacing here and the spacing between the E and the G. It's all a little bit confusing. By pressing F6, I get a chance to bring that up to the center. I can see what I'm dealing with. So here, the light blue means I've got some, at least one leading one in the shape. And that's just the, to alert me that there's a leading one that I wouldn't normally know about. Um, and you can see here, these little narrow um, uh, lines are the special characters. So that's line feed, UTF-8, 10. And that's carriage return, UTF-8, 13. And this really wide one here is tab, UTF-8, 9. So what you're actually seeing here is a single row. But because of the carriage returns and the line feeds, it looks like it's multiple uh, rows. And with J, you can actually show this kind of interestingly by just boxing it. And when you do box, you get this. And when I display this, you'll see what's going on. When J boxes special characters, it takes away their power. So this is still uh, line feed, and this is still carriage return, and this is still tab, but they don't have any of those effects that they can do. They don't change lines, they don't form feed, uh, they don't tab out. And the reason that uh, tab looks wider when you look at it this way is because I don't know how wide the tab is going to be, depending on the setup of your machine. Because tabs are set on the display. They're not set up within the machine. So because they're set up on the display, I just make it longer to make it obvious. So we'll see another instance of this. Let's do uh, C. And we've got another thing that looks like a number of different rows. Um, and in fact, this one actually is a number of different rows. Look at this, and if I click on this, its actual shape is 2-4. But of course, it's never as clear as it is. I've got a tab there. I've got a carriage return there. I've got a line feed here. So again, if I box this, it becomes much easier to see what's going on or what Jay's doing when it boxes. It takes away the power of those special characters. But without being able to take a look at the special characters and the way they represent in the text, there's the tab, and there's the carriage return. But it has no effect because it's boxed. So hopefully, that shows you how Jig can make looking at special characters in literal format a little bit easier.